Well, welcome back everyone. I'm full warning meteorologist Brian Sherman. We're going to switch gears and talk about some astronomy as we head into this afternoon. There are a lot of telescopes and a lot of tools at NASA's disposal to take a look at things that are literally out of this world. I had the opportunity to talk with some astronomers over at NASA about the new James Webb telescope as they celebrate one year with it and some of the spectacular images that are coming from it as well. Take a look. July 12th marks the one year since the release of the first set of the breathtaking images we've seen from the James Webb Space Telescope or Webb, NASA's largest and most powerful space telescope that's already showing some revolutionizing astronomy. Here to talk more about these incredible discoveries today and show us something new and talk about that is NASA's experts here, Carl Gordon. Carl, thanks so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Oh, I'm happy to be here. So I've already seen this floating around social media earlier this morning. A new image was released today. Tell me about this new image and a little bit about what we're seeing. So this is a star forming region that's uh, fairly nearby in astronomical terms at 400 light years. Um, that's forming new stars out of interstellar matter. And so what we're seeing in this image on the bottom, you're actually seeing the interstellar matter lit up by the uh, by a, a, one of the stars. And then on the top, you see a lot of newly formed stars and they have all these red jets coming out of them. And so those red jets are where they're expelling material that was part of the cloud they were born from. And you, there's maybe 50 of them and these stars are about the same mass as our sun. So we're kind of seeing our sun, what might've been what our sun looked like when it was formed. So Carl, we talked about telescopes here on our weather program before, but tell me how does Webb work with other telescopes that are out there and give us a little more complete view of what's actually out there in the universe. Well, that's a bit, that, that's a tall order, but so for the point of Webb, Webb works in the infrared. So this is not something we see with our eyes, um, but we feel as heat. Um, and it's very complementary to say to the Hubble Space Telescope, which works in the optical, where which we see with our eyes, and in the UV, which you all you can't see with your eyes, but you feel as sunburn. Um, and so this is together we get this kind of more complete picture of what these regions look like, and we learn different things at different wavelengths. And just to say there are other, you know, we have observatories in the X-ray, we have observatories in the radio and far infrared. So all this together, we can learn a great deal about. Um, the objects we're looking at. And so it seems like everything works hand in hand, correct? Hubble, Webb, and other telescopes, right? Yeah, so we, you know, the, we don't have that many observatories like this. So as a worldwide astronomy community, we get together and we make sure that we're complementary um, so you're not duplicating things. So yeah, so it's, it's a worldwide process. So tell me, what are some of the findings you're seeing so far? So I, that, I, I, that a very tall order. We see things from, uh, we're learning things about planets in our own solar system, rings of, of around them, other their moons, et cetera. We're learning things about exoplanets and the atmospheres of exoplanets through transiting spectroscopy. Everything as uh, nearby or star forming regions, gas and dust in our galaxy, like we're seeing in the Ophiuchus picture we just released today, as well as nearby galaxies, we're seeing lots of incredible filamentary structure, which is very exciting. I work on interstellar matter, so that's very exciting for me. And then you can just keep going out in distance until you get near the beginning of the, of the universe, the very earliest galaxies. And we're seeing those galaxies and we're studying them in more detail and learning, you know, they're maybe more developed than we originally thought, but that's why we're taking the data. We didn't know. So we're learning. So I know I said, and you just said too, it's a tall order for what we're learning from this. Give me the one thing you're most excited about from the images that are coming out today and the data you're getting from them. I mean, so I, I study interstellar matter. That's my area of expertise. So I'm very excited. You know, today you can see this incredible amount of interstellar matter that the stars form out of, and it's all lit up. And we're going to learn things about well, the composition, the structure, et cetera. I'm also, I'm, I'm very excited about learning in more detail, much more specific detail, what kind of gas we have, what kind of dust we have in interstellar space. And there's a, one of the programs I'm, I'm excited about is the one for Orion, a very famous one, right? We have the Orion, the very, it's illuminating a, a, a mass of interstellar matter, the PDR, whatever, don't worry about that part. Um, and uh, so when we're learning a lot, not just from images, which you see, we get lots of press releases on, but the spectroscopy as well, where we get to see uh, much more fine details of what is there, right? The spectroscopy is just a whole bunch of images. Um, a much finer uh, what resolution and there's fingerprints of 
what kind of gas is there, how much it is, what its temperature, what kind of dust is there, and there are fingerprints of the kinds of dust. It's carbonaceous dust and silicate dust, little tiny grains of soot and sand, and in detail what they are. So I'm very excited about that kind of very get, let's get down to the meat and quantitative detail about what is interstellar matter. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, interstellar matter could kind of help us figure out how planets are formed, stars are formed. What could we learn from that? So, yeah, so the interstellar matter is what forms the stars and the planets, right? It all forms out of this. So the question of, you know, that's kind of the precursors. What material do you have to make a star? What material do you have to make planets? And there's lots of questions about, you know, for example, in the disks that these these uh, the interstellar matter then forms around the, the new stars, right? What's in that disk? Is there water, right, et cetera? So all that things, things that we need to know we need for life, at least life as we know it, right? The interstellar matter provides that precursor. And so we're, that, that's one of the neat things, that a neat connection for, for me. So the web in conjunction with other telescopes, they're really giving us a lot of information to kind of like broaden our horizons, maybe on how the Earth was formed since you were talking about interstellar matter and again, how other planets and stars, things not only in maybe our solar system are formed. That's right. So right, we, we, we know a lot about our solar system because we're in it. We can study it very well. We can send probes to it. But it's just one solar system forming. And what we really do is need to have a lot of no knowledge about a lot of different kinds of solar systems to understand how are we average? Are we, you know, what, what does it look like in other systems? And then we can learn more about how we formed as well. Absolutely. And I think this kind of leads into the next one. Um, you were talking about what you're looking forward to with this. What's next with the web? So the web is we've uh, uh, just decided on the next year's worth of observations. And this is a worldwide astronomical community gets together, proposes way more targets to observe than we have time for. And so we then pick the ones that are most exciting, et cetera. And, and then those move forward for uh, observation. So, and that's gonna be everything from solar system objects all the way out to the highest redshift galaxies. As we're, we're learning, you know, astronomers are learning more about what Webb can do, right? We, we didn't see the images before they came either. We didn't know, as well as uh, refining the science questions we can then ask as a result of that about what we've seen and what we know Webb can do. And so the next, you know, the next year is going to be even more amazing. So you were saying a lot of things you want to look at, not a lot of time to do it. How much time do you really have to work with to see images on the web? Uh, so it's it's quite efficient. It observes all the time, right? It's a 24-7 telescope. So we have as much time as there is, but it turns out even if you, it, you know, we, astronomers are very good at thinking of things to do. So it's like eight times more time than there is in a year we, pro we would love to use. And that's the kind of, there's so much uh, things that we can do that we just will never have be able to do it all. So we still have to pick, we have to prioritize. And one of the not, uh, very exciting things about Webb is the engineering and uh, the scientists who built Webb and launched it were so good that it looks like we might have, we will have longer than we planned, which is good because that means we can learn that much more. That's good. And for viewers and people like me who want to learn more about this, where can we go to keep up with all this? Uh, so uh, the best place to go to see all the images, stories about it, spectra, de all the details is jwstnasa.gov. Um, and then if you want to keep up with what's going on um, on a day-to-day -day basis, follow, uh, follow us on na at NASA Web on social media. Carl Gordon, NASA astronomer over at the Goddard Space Flight Center over in Greenbelt. Been over to Greenbelt many times. Didn't know you guys were located there. Thanks so much for joining us today, talking about the Webb Telescope, new images that are coming out, and learning a little more about astronomy. We thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. Some great information, some great images. I loved hearing him talk about how they're going to use this data, even for things that are truly out of this world. 